When we started this vlog, it was very much about trying to get you guys inside amateur bike racing as much as possible. And look, whilst we've done like loads of really cool stuff, I really want to strip this back for 2020 and give you guys stories, give you guys the stories that will are part of this team and a part of bike racing at this level. So we're going to start this year, this 2020 year, as I'm intending to continue it with a really pared back look at this team. And it all starts with our four day training camp and launch event in Bowery. Before we get down to the camp, guys, there's one thing we have to talk about. The C word, continental. We have registered with the UCI next year as a continental team. Now, the way to think about that is this is like the third division of the UCI. So you have your world tour, then you have your pro continental teams, then you have your continental teams. Up until now, we have been an amateur national team. So you've been affiliated to the national governing, governing body. So in Australia, Cycling Australia. Now, you're gonna all say, hang on, you've done a few UCI races today. True, we got wild card entries as an amateur national team to do those, the one in New Zealand and the one in the Philippines. We could not go and apply to lots of other races as an amateur national team without the continental well, registration. So the why, okay. This is possibly the bit where I could totally bullshit you and tell you that, you know, this was all part of the grand plan. We're eventually gonna go world tour and we're gonna do all this plan because we know that the truth is, the absolute honest truth is that the riders forced us to. That's true. The guy's results last year quite simply forced us to look into it because, well, the guys are now good enough to do the races that UCI Continental allows you to do. So, well, okay, if you're gonna force us to try and get race entries to these races, I suppose we're just gonna have to register. As it is actually the truth. Right, so that's the why, that's the Conti stuff. Let's get into the camp because this is where it all sort of starts to take place. Guys, we'd never done anything like this before. We wanted to put something together where the guys all got together, we got to do some riding, we got to do some, well, team bonding, all that kind of stuff. So we went down to Barrel, in sort of Southern Highlands, New South Wales, to the world's driest place. And well, we just went for it. So truth is, this is going to seem so seamless to these guys, but this has been anything but seamless. Picking those ones up there. We are at DHL. So it's Friday, guys. It's Friday the... Oh, it's Friday the 13th. Did you know that, Elizabeth? It's Friday the 13th. My favourite day of the year. Favourite day of the year. We're picking up a few items that go in there. We have seven bikes in the car and we are heading down to Barrel. But just the fact we've got these was like 24 hours ago, just not gonna happen. We had to inform the guys earlier in the week that there were gonna be no bikes. So they had to bring their own bikes to the team launch, to the training camp, because we didn't have them. I think the phrase Elizabeth uses is a uh, jammy fucker. Correct? Correct. Currently, I am a jammy fucker. So we are essentially at a dormitory in the 1970s, but it has been absolutely perfect for what we want to do because we've got, so we've got the 10 uh, UCI Conti riders, we've got Luke, we've got Izzy, we've got Aaron. I'm gonna take you inside and show you because 
a whole part of this has obviously been getting the team together, but it's also been, well, it's been building bikes, it's been getting kits together, it's been doing media shoots, it's been doing all that type of stuff, and this is the space that we've been using. That's right, we're gonna go in here. So, we have a lot of beds. We have some nudity as well, so we can run a high aperture there and you won't see, sort of mimicking what was happening in 1970s uh, boarding school lifestyles. We've got the, the bathroom in there. But down the end is where the business is kind of happening for us. As you would have seen, we had, well, seven frames arrived the day before this all happened, which meant during the team camp, the riding camp, the boys have just been building the bikes flat chat to try and get the guys on them. Changing out a couple of little bits and pieces as the boys have discovered over the weekend that measurements don't always line up. Stems and bars change a little bit here and there. One of the things that has worked about this being a last minute disaster has been the fact that obviously the guys are now here with all the tools to do the building. Had to swap the stem link, uh, some even had to swap frame. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of mid right adjustment as well, like saddle tilt down a little bit, tilt up a little bit, one degree up, one degree down. We have nine vegan slash vegetarian and what, six normal people. What we've been doing is have the uh, some lunches and some dinners catered for. So the trays, as I will show you, the trays of food are like wraps for lunch that come down, like the tray for the vegan and the veggie stuff is like way larger. It's really interesting, like even that sort of vlog that I was saying about me going vegan, about it being, maybe me being involved in the cycling community is something that's kind of maybe impacted my decision. Well, I clearly think that's the case now because it's like just look at these demographics it's outrageous so anyway i think we might have to change our name pretty soon so so i'm really conscious of not making this vlog like you know oh we chose this brand over that brand or this brand over that. for starters it's probably not that interesting and the other honest truth is that like our growth obviously our growth to a continental level some brands aren't interested in that and and that's the reality with bianchi bianchi are not interested in, you know, they've got their world to a team, that's fantastic, they've got that level of thing. They don't really want that sort of middle-tiered team. So that's just our, our direction compared to where their sort of brand is. It's nothing more or less than that. Like this is the Nero Continental Devel A01 for, for 2020. The frame itself is very similar to the one that we did a first look at. Really the only change is the paint scheme, which we've gone for a nude carbon, but with that same two-tone rear end triangle. We are running a Campagnolo record 12-speed mechanical group set. The team will be set up race day with the WTO wheels, a combination of the 45s and the 60s linked up to the Maxxis Open Road tubeless ready tires. Everyone is on the Sella Italia SLR Boost Superflow saddle and power is an interesting one. It's the Favaro Asioma power pedals. It's pedal based, a combination of the Duo and the Uno. So yeah, you'll see the bike change, the group set change, the contact points change, the saddles change, tires have changed just lots of change. Oh, power meters, power meters have changed, which is gonna be great for you guys because there's loads of new products and content and brands for us to sort of look at and talk about, which will be kind of cool. But on that, actually, on that, I think you might find this interesting. So it's Baron Gary whack today, guys. Jay Vine having a crack before the KOM. The rest of us hanging on. It's gonna be fun. Alrighty, let's have some fun guys. We're driving into the bottom of the climb. So Barangari itself is around 7.6, 7.7 k's long. It's an average gradient of around 7% and it's actually pretty average gradient. Like that is what that gradient is a lot of the time. You've got my camera here running on at the moment and we'll also just quickly flick to Jay's camera. He's running one as well. Just ignore his uh, grade sort of mark there. That seems to settle itself pretty quickly. I actually thought we'd take this opportunity just while we're hitting the lower slopes to just quickly talk about the gearing. So most of the guys have all chosen uh, 1129 rear cassettes, but Jay has actually run a semi-compact. He's the only one to choose a semi-compact gearing. And you might be able to see, so that's Dylan just in front of me, but Jay in front of him, spinning that slightly higher cadence, mountain bike sort of cadence, on the semi-compact. So it'll be interesting to see if the guys sort of think about that. A lot of the guys are actually talking about moving to that 1132 option, I think, which you can run with the 12-speed group. 
Now, okay, yeah, let's let's do this. I, I want to talk a little bit about me. Boring snooze fest. But anyway, I, I haven't had a fit on this bike. Okay, so I've literally just put the components on, tried to sort of measure them up a bit similar to what I had on the previous one and just have ridden it. What's been annoying though is I started fiddling and I just fell down the rabbit warren of fiddling and I feel super, super uncomfortable on the bike all of a sudden. And it's it's come out of nowhere. Uh, it's like you've fallen down a rabbit warren and I've just started choosing lots of different things to move specifically the cleats the cleats i found one thing that i just can't get right and yeah you, you see where this is going right I'm, I'm using this as an excuse but i'm actually going to hand this over to you guys so obviously i'm going to get a proper fit soon but just look at me on the bike there look how awkward it looks it's 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 ugly like let's be honest look at this this is horrendous so it's like a K in and I'm in absolute agony. But look at this, look at this horrific bike riding that I'm doing. So this is my challenge to you guys. Have a look at my setup. Have a look at me humping the bike currently and tell me what do you think is wrong with my setup? Because, well, I need help desperately. While I'm wallowing in my bike fit self-pity, I thought we might go back up to Jay and get interesting. Um, shout out to, to Ben and to Dylan who hung with him for a good portion of it. But I really wanted to take this chance to just talk about the group set thing one more time. So what's interesting here is not only do you have guys coming back to mechanical group sets, some of these guys have actually never ridden mechanical group sets on their road bike. Unfortunately, I asked some of the guys on camera on the bike about their sort of first impressions and not a lot of it came across due to wind. But I did get a quick chance to have a chat to Jay at the top of the climb and he sort of had his thoughts on it. I'm loving mechanical. I didn't think I'd ever go back to DI2. Sorry, go go back from DI2, but no, I really enjoy mechanical camping. And yeah, the consensus seems to be that yeah, you can't get away with those real slop shifts that you used to be able to do. But once you get a, your head around the fact that you're not pressing a button, you're moving a lever, you actually start to feel like you've almost got more control over the rear derailleur and the front derailleur. It's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, we'll do some interesting stuff over the season with that kind of stuff. Now we've got the group to test. Did want to pick something out from his ride. It was interesting sitting and watching this ride. Just look at his watts and the gradient. And I want to just sort of note a few sort of moves here because what I found really interesting, and this is something I'm not good at, is just how consistent he is on lower grades and higher grades, how consistent his power is. It sits sort of around that 430, 4, 440, 450 area. No matter, there he was at 10% doing that sort of thing. Here's a spot of him at 4% doing pretty much the exact same wattage just metronomically consistent i mean if you're gonna go and do an ftp test that's the perfect look at that he's doing this is now this is the top where it's crested he's doing his 440 there's the finish line he's not even sprinting for it so how was that yeah that middle section was super easy hey what is that so give it a good boot <laughs> give it a good give it a <laughs> barely felt like i was pedaling <laughs> <laughs> It's really nice, nice open roads, no traffic. You can ride for ages and not stop. So it's good, it's been really good. One of the obvious things to do when you're introducing a team is to, will introduce the riders to you. Yeah, the training camp's been pretty good. Uh, it's been pretty solid with a fair few Ks, but it's been good to get to know the boys and get to know the equipment. And I wanna kind of let that happen naturally. If the guys wanna come in front of camera and talk and, and be part of it, then that's absolutely fantastic. And it's great for you guys because you get less of me, but it's not that easy. I know that I've had feedback from that in the past. We get feedback from that in the EOIs that this can be sometimes a challenge for a young elite cyclist who is maybe introverted or just not that keen on being in this sort of space. So let's just sit back, let the guys introduce themselves when they feel fit. Start it up. Title. <laughs> Ten vegan fries. <laughs> <laughs>
Right now, guys, that's us done down here. Huge thanks to Jesse for taking some of the awesome snaps you've seen down here. AJ, why? His name's not AJ, his name's Andrew. It's Anthony. Anthony. But everybody knows him as AJ. AJ. Fair enough. Obviously, Izzy and Aaron for really just working 24 7 to get these bikes built. Uh, we had Blake down here shooting some really cool drone footage, and obviously, Luke pretty much running the show. Take everything you need for the ride. Luke, you just Lee, said questions? That. You just said that. Questions, Luke? No, because you're gonna always gonna have more. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, from here, well, you sort of see the kits now starting to appear at, well, nationals, I suppose, in the beginning of January. We're hoping to also get a few guys to tour down under, so make sure you kind of link up with us for that. As I said, get the comments below. What do you want to know? Nothing's off limits here. I, I want to go for it next year. We, we may make some enemies, all right? So let's just see how we get on. Shoot a nail gun if you uh, like this video or <laughs> subscribe to the channel. Anyway, thanks again, guys. We'll see you in the very near future. Happy Christmas. How good are flies? They're just the best. They're the best thing ever. Uh, they are. It's the boys. They're just great. I love flies. I just, I just think they're great for humans. Really? Human flies. Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> How good are flies?